tool wear and failure. The usefulness of the tool cutting edge is lost through the chipping, the thermal cracking, the fracture, the notching, the plastic deformation, the built up edge, and the failure. The tool failure implies that the tool has reached a point beyond which it will not function satisfactory until it's ready to be resharpened, if possible. The three modes of the uh, tool failure are the fracture failure, where the cutting force becomes excessive, it will lead to the failure by the brutal fracture. There is a temperature failure, where the cutting temperature is going to be too high for the tool material, which makes the tool points to be softened and will lead to the plastic deformation along with the loss of the sharp edges. And we have the gradual wear, where the gradual wearing of the cutting edge causes the loss of the tool shape, reduction in the cutting efficiency, and finally the tool failure. The fracture and the temperature failure are premature failures. The gradual wear is referred because it will lead to the longest possible use of the tool. The gradual wear occurs in two locations on the tool. The crater wear, which occurs on the top of the rake face, and the flank wear, which occurs on the flank, which is the side of the tool. Although that the relationship shown is for the flank wear, a similar relationship occurs for the crater wear. Three regions can usually be identified in the typical wear growth curve. The first is the break in period, in which the sharp cutting edge wears rapidly at the beginning of its use. This first region occurs within the few, minute, few minutes of the cutting operation. The break in period is followed by the wear that occurs at fairly uniform rate. This is called the steady state wear region. In our figure, this region is pictured as a linear function of time, although that there are deviations from the straight line in actual machining. Finally, the wheel reach a level at which the wheel rate begins to accelerate. And this marks the beginnings of the failure region, in which the cutting temperatures are higher and the general efficiency of the machining process is reduced. If it allowed to continue, the tool finally fails by the temperature failure. The slope of the tool wear curve in the steady state region is affected by the work material and the cutting conditions. The harder work materials causes the wear rate, which is the slope of the wear curve, to increase. An increased speed, feed, and the depth of the cut have a similar effect, with the speed being the most important of the three. If the tool wear curves are plotted on for several different cutting speeds, the result will appear as this figure. As a cutting speed increased, the wear rate increases, so the same level of the wheels is going to be reached in less time. The relationship between the tool life and the cutting speed credited to Frederick W. Taylor, also known for the Taylorism. Taylor used the natural log-to-log -log plot of the cutting speed with the tool life to present what's known as the Taylor tool life equation. In Taylor equation, the V is the cutting speed and the T is the tool life. The N and the C are a parameters that depends on the feed, the depth of the cut, the work material, the tooling material, and the tool life criterion used. So, in conclusion, the tool life is defined as the length of the cutting time that the tool can be used. Operating the tool until the final catastrophic failure is one way of defining the tool life. 
increased speed, feed, and the depth of the cut have the same similar effects, with the speed being the most important of the three. The longest life, uh, the longest tool life is desirable, but the high cutting speed is necessary to reduce the cutting time. Taylor tool life equation is used to optimize the cutting speeds for the optimal tool life.